So let's have a little fun and bring an axe back to life. This is a single bit axe that was found by my friend Francie Moyer in the Susquehanna River and uh, has no handle, it's all rotted out, a little bit rusty, not terribly pitted though, so I think we can scrape that rust off. Um, so I'll show you how I'm gonna bring that back to life. This is called the pole, and unfortunately somebody smashed this thing with a hammer, which you don't ever wanna do. My guess is somebody was using this as like a firewood splitting wedge or something, I don't know. Uh, but you don't want to be pounding the back of your axe uh, with a metal tool. Uh, what you can do, on the other hand, is you can use your axe to pound in, I use it to pound in plastic wedges or wooden wedges when you're felling a tree. But metal on metal is never good. You'll see how it's all mushroomed out. So I'm going to try and take that burr off using a grinding wheel. And then I'll show you how to uh, make a handle. And we'll bring this thing back to life and have a little fun with it. This is a double bit axe that we found up in uh, Sproul state forest area near our hunting camp. And this one's real pitted as you can see. So pretty cool, but I, I don't know that I'm gonna have the energy to bring this one back to life. I might just leave it as is, but, but this one, the pitting's not real bad and I think we could bring it back to life. So step one, why don't we get this rust off and then grind off that burr and get that cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna save the edge for the very end. So once, we, once we've cleaned it up, once we put a handle on it, we're gonna build a handle. Then the very last thing I'll do, uh, is, is dress that edge and, and get a real nice edge on there. Okay, we were able to get all the uh, burr off the top there, the pole. Well, I shouldn't say got all of it, but got a lot of it off. And, uh, you know, there's some pitting in the steel, but overall it's cleaning up really nicely and it's going to be a very usable axe again, I think. And one of my favorite things about cleaning up old tools is some information usually starts to come out from under the rust. We got a 42. At first I thought it was four and a half, uh, about a four and a half pound axe, which it still could be. See, it's a big four and a small two. So I'm gonna try and make sense of that. And then on the other side, I can't tell if we're looking at a JW or is it a is it something upside down? But there's definitely a marking there, so we'll have to do a little research and see if we can figure out where this came from. Here in Pennsylvania, there were a lot of axe factories, um, Collins, Mann, and a few others that, that were out there. So I'll see if I can find some information. But what, um, if it's hand forged, sometimes you can see like a fold mark in there where, where the, the two pieces of metal were brought up and, and hammered together. Uh, another thing I'm seeing, which is a good thing, is can you see the different color steel? There's a different color metal here than there is here. Different color here. That's because the, the chopping part, the actual edge, it needs to be a, a different grade of steel, a little harder steel. And uh, boy, based on the way that looks, well, we'll see. We'll let everybody comment in. You tell me what you're seeing, but I feel like, I feel like that is starting to look more and more actually like a hand forged. Uh, axe, so we'll see. Awesome. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is develop a handle and then get the handle set. And it's called hanging. Uh, once the handle's done, you're going to hang the axe. I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, the very last thing is we'll bring, a, bring an edge back to that and then we'll see how it chops. All right, got a good piece of hickory, but it is about 12 feet long, so we're going to have to cut it down. Here's a, a nice single bit axe that I keep that I use. Uh, really like this and I like I like the handles design I like everything about this so we're going to use this as our model today so get the approximate length and that's a, a true one by which you know, that, that's going to do the job if you look at the finished product, what we're going for. A one by is going to do it. Some people prefer to have a two by so they have more wood to work with, but I like that. There's some stains in it, but those are not cracks. That's a really clean piece of hickory, no knots. This will be a good one. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace, I'm going to trace this guy. I have about an inch extra on both ends. So 
Some people would keep tool handle patterns in their workshop, which is brilliant. I just uh, keep a, a specimen of a tool. You know, like I said, I really like this one, so that's my specimen, here's my top. Okay. So I've traced it. It may not look important, but that little toe there um, is real handy. That's, that's gonna give you that grip so the tool does not slide out of your hands. So let's take this over and cut it out on the bandsaw. This is a great tool called a schnitzel bunk. Uh, at least that's the Pennsylvania German for it. I got a foot operated swivel and I can put the piece of wood. Here's our, our trimmed out with the bandsaw piece of hickory. But I can put this in here and then with my foot I can hold it tight. And this is called a draw blade or a draw knife. Draw blade is sharp, sharpened on one side, not on the other. The, the unsharpened side is the side you want, to, you want facing you. So what I'm doing now is just like that. I find if you hold the draw blade a little diagonal like that, it cuts a little better rather than straight on. And don't take off too many, too many big pieces at once or it bites in. You kind of do these little shavings. Takes a while, but do it right. The schnitzel bonk is an awesome invention. And it's just fun to say, schnitzel bonk. I think, I think it means tool bench, but a carving bench. My Pennsylvania German is not fluent, but great tool. And uh, the reason they use hickory on, on these axe handles, hickory is real hard, but it's also shock absorbent. So it's like, it's really the ideal tool handle, especially on like hammers and axes and things that you're pounding with, because you don't want that energy going into your, uh, your wrist and your bones. In fact, fiberglass tools, um, those fiberglass tool handles that come out with nowadays. I get why they sell them. It's cheap to make. It's easy, but you will wreck your you will wreck your uh, bones swinging a fiberglass tool. So don't. All right, so it's not done, but we're getting to the point where I'm gonna start paying attention to detail. So for example, now I need to, I need to trace that on the end. Paying attention to, and of course a handle like this, there's a front and there's a back. So slow down and make sure you've got it on the right way. Just putting the pencil right down in there. So that's what I'm working towards. All right, now that I got the basic shape of the handle, and I've done a pretty good job, I think, of getting this ready to fit the uh, axe head, I'm going to switch over to two tools I really like. Uh, one is a rasp. This is just a hand rasp. It's just uh, Sim similar to a file, but it has some really nice teeth on it. And this is, uh, I don't know the, the name of it, but it's a type of plane or a, a shave. It says Stanley Shoreform. I think I got it from my dad. And uh, this is just a nice tool for um, getting these, these rough spots off. So what I'll do is get that trimmed up. I'm ready for some pretty heavy sandpaper. Okay, I think we are ready to set the axe head on. And so what we're gonna need to do is put a little crack right here with an axe or a hatchet. That's eventually, once the axe head is on, that's where we're gonna put a wedge to then swell it tight so that it doesn't come off. Back. So 
got that just started. It's just enough. It's all I want. All right, it is time to hang, hang the axe head. So now we're at the point where the head should hopefully fit over top but not go the whole way up. So I'm about halfway down in. It needs to be pounded the rest of the way. Although it's tempting to hit it from the top, that's not what you do. I mean, you can, you can tap it a little to get it started. But the proper way to hang an axe is you hold it upside down like this. And with a wooden mallet, you hit it from this end. Not a, not a metal one or you risk, and if you hit too hard, even with wood, you risk chipping out a piece of your handle. So. It's almost on. Now what we're going to do is that little crack that we established, we're going to put a wedge in there and just make a wedge out of, uh, Ash makes a really good wedge. This is a little piece of oak. But what I'm going to do is start it right in there and that'll, the farther it goes in, it'll swell the top and hopefully keep that head on real tight. Okay, got the excess trimmed. That swelled up real nice and tight. So now it's time to put an edge on this. So uh, the final part is there's some real nicks and some real damage in that blade. And so we'll try and get that dressed up. All right, so we got the majority of the really bad divots gone now using the grinding wheel. And then what I like to do is take a flat file and uh, put a real nice edge on I mean, that's already sharp enough, but I like to get a real nice edge with a flat file. So that's how we're going to finish it off. And to check the sharpness, Goes sideways, never go, never go long ways down a blade. It'll end badly for your finger. That feels mighty good. You don't want it razor sharp. That's too thin. You know, if you have too thin of a blade, it's it, it's gonna. When you go chop, at least here in Pennsylvania, and you go chop it into a hardwood log, piece of oak or something, um, it'll bend or or it break. So I like, you know, you don't want it razor sharp. I like to have a nice cutting edge, but. All right, so as we're finished up the final touches here, putting some linseed oil on it. My high school ag teacher, Paul Heasley, used to keep linseed oil around the shop at Danville High School. And so he was my FFA teacher, VOAG teacher. And uh, we put linseed oil on all our wood handles. Anyway, um, we're so quick to throw things out anymore that taking the time to rebuild a, a broken handle or something is just getting to be a lost art form. And quite honestly, um, the tools that were made in the old days were so much better quality than some of the junk coming from overseas today. I must admit, I kind of like that this doesn't say made in China on it. And uh, this piece of hickory grew right here on my property. So that's about as sustainable as you're going to get. You know, this didn't take much in the way of fossil fuels to harvest. And here it is being used, hopefully for years to come. not the prettiest handle. I realize it's got some imperfections, but I kind of like it that way because someone's going to know that this was homemade years from now. I'm going to find this and go, he didn't buy this at Walmart. And uh, I took just enough care that it's, it's functionally correct, but I like that it has a rustic quality to it. All right. Finished product. I'm happy with it. I don't know who JW was, but the more I think about it, this was a hand forged ax. Okay, he put his initials on it. Don't know what the 42 meant, but uh, the fact that we can clearly see the two different steels now, there's that hardened steel on the end. Um, and the fact that he's got his initials put on it, this was, this was hand forged. I mean, it could have been from the 1700s, but I, I would say it's probably 1800s, but it, 
has not chopped wood for a long time. My friend Francie Moyer found it in the Susquehanna River. Let's take it outside and see how it chops. See how she chops. Yep, looks tight as can be up there. Crosscut saw. The crosscut saw was not even invented till after the Civil War. So the majority of the trees that were cut here in Pennsylvania to make farmland, they were done with a single bit axe. See how she splits. Heavier single bit axe. So it's kind of nice for splitting. Good axe. So now the question is do I keep it or give it to Francie Moyer? He's the one that found it in the Susquehanna River. He'd hang it on the wall. I think I'd give it to Francie. 